श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम अन्वयली we all know everything but we know all and everything this is what we do not know see the fun when we go to the temple to have the darshan of the lord we go there and close our eyes why we close our eyes by default we all know that and whenever we are operating through the mind we go away whenever we are operating through the thoughts we go away and then we go to the mahatmas and ask this question Maharaj ji, I have been doing meditation for last thirty years. One gentleman spoke to me on Singapore airport. I have been doing meditation for thirty years. I said, "That's your problem. What can I do?" No, I have got one question. I said, "This is enough." His question was, "My mind is always disturbed. Otherwise, everything is fine." <laughs> meditation see i'll give an example to make this point the other day i spoke somewhere about this i was in your vrindavan uh, and we went for the aarti of yamuna ji so the person who took me he wanted to talk to me on something and i wanted him to keep shut so the best way is to keep him occupied so i told him look at the river yes and as the waters are flowing also observe all that is happening in the water okay till this arti goes on watch that so you are watching now he can't talk to me and i was happy so after the aarti was over he was built up up to here so i mean can i ask you now i said no you answer my question what did you see there he said as a water he said further nothing yamuna ji is flowing i said okay i'll tell you there are two movements of water one movement of water is general yamuna ji is going in one direction that is one movement of water and then there are some wheel pools bhavra there also there is a movement of water the so two movements and if something is floating and coming in that common general unidirectional flow of water there is no torture there is no struggle there is no effort there is all peace because no efforts simply let go but in case some insect or something happens to get caught up in that wheel pool what will happen wheel pool has got another movement and direction of the flow of water it is centripetal force the centripetal force pulls the things within and downwards see and that wheel pool which has come from nowhere and it goes nowhere it doesn't continue to exist all the time and this can happen only when it is the 
river which is flowing in one direction. You cannot see a whirlpool in a lake because there is no movement. Be very attentive. In the same manner, we are all of us having one common movement of life from birth to death. In that there is no problem. There are no efforts. Many of us have this funny notion. Dhoop mein baal safed nahi kiye. Baal ho tab safed karoge na. Meaning what? I have become old. What is our contribution? What we have done to become old? It is the earth which is moving around the sun and we are becoming old. Earth should become old, not we. Think. In this journey from the womb to the tomb, Today we went to see one tomb in the afternoon. <coughs> so, from the womb to the tomb, it is a common journey and it is same for everyone. And what is that journey? Balastavat krida saktaha, tarunastavat taruni raktaha, vruddastavat chinta saktaha, parame brahmane kopila raktaha. Bhajagovindam, Bhajagovindam. This is the common journey. We are all going through that. And there is a unique journey for every one of us. And that unique journey is that Gun guna rahe hai bhaure khil rahe hai kali kali. Sharif mat bano, everybody knows. <laughs> friends. The other journey is like that centripetal journey. And when we get lost in this centripetal journey, we get crystallized into I, I, I. See? To what extent? The son said, iPhone. <coughs> the daughter said, I pawed, the wife said, I paid, the husband, father said, I paid. <laughs> Ours is the journey of Mr. I. Until such time, this I is present, we know only one silence. And that silence is only a relative silence. And for getting the relative silence, we go away from the hassle of the cities, towns. And then today we went to that somebody's tomb. It was not my tomb, somebody else's tomb. So when we in enter inside, oh, how calm, how quiet it is. Because we know only two options, noise and absence of noise. And that absence of nice, cordless silence, we are completely lost and addicted. So what we do? We want to sit for meditation. Silence. Close the door. Put on a board. Meditation in progress. Take detour. So outside, steady. Inside, volcanoes. And with all struggle, silence, silence, silence. And you sit there. And all that which you never expected, you will start listening. In your bathroom, the tap will leak and the water will drop on a plastic bucket and will make a noise. And that is enough to disturb your silence. And then you start biting your teeth. How many times I told these people? Meditation. 
And then you start counting. Tuck. Oh God, I think I should do something. Tuck. But why these people can't just be little aware? Tuck. I don't know how to handle this situation. Tuck. After some time, that tuck tuck stops. What happened? Pani gaya? Meditation. So we know only relative silence. Absence of sound is the only silence we know. Friends, absence cannot trouble us. Absence cannot benefit us. <coughs> See? Like our shadow. <coughs> that which cannot trouble us, that which cannot benefit us. Should we ever worry about it? See? It is something like this. Once I went to some Shiva temple because of some uh, people were trying to play fool with me, so I made fool of them. They called me, Swamiji, the lecture is at 5 o'clock. So, obediently I reached there, 5 minutes before 5, and there were about 5, 10 people sitting. I said, okay, let us start. No, Swamiji, people are yet to come. I said, let them come late, we will start. No, actually we have announced 6 o'clock. Then why did you tell me for come for your block? So that we can spend some more time with you. I said, very good. We are really intelligent people. Then I said, hey, whose car is that Honda? That particular car, model, I wanted to see something. Whose car is that? Mine. Come, take your key. We went. I sat inside. I said, start and go out. Let these people wait for one hour. <laughs> so where to go? I said, go anywhere you like. Swami, so, should we go to temple? I said, go to temple. We went to temple, evening time, Shiva's temple. Backside is sun, in between me, in front, Lord Shiva. So my shadow straight away landed on Lord Shiva. Will I say, oh, my shadow is luckier than me. Directly touching Lord Shiva. After that, I finished my darshan and came out and loitering in the compound. I am the same, sun is the same, shadow is the same. That very time, one doggy came from somewhere. And of all the places, he searched that particular spot where my shadow was landed. And then, what a doggy could do? First, Atma Pradakshina. <laughs> and then, Purna Madha, Purna Vidam, Purna Aat, Purna Mudachate. So when he did that, will I feel bad? Hey man, don't do that on my shadow because shadow does not have existence. It is appearance, is it not? If absence of words or sounds is silence, that is what we have understood. Then this absence is of no consequences to us. Silence is not an absence of sound. But most of us get lost in that. Therefore, when we are told, listen to the silence. Listening happens by the ears. See? When we are listening, we are using the ears. Yet we also experience the absence of the sounds. Now this absence of the sounds called as the silence, with what we listen? Absence cannot be heard. See? When I do like this, your ears are hearing. But the absence you are hearing by what? And if you are hearing the absence, somebody must be present. 
three friends. Therefore, when we have to listen to the silence, it is a journey, like Bhagavan Ramana Maharshi says, Prana bandhanat liyate vanaha eka chintanat nashamityada. Unless we transcend the mind, we can never listen the silence. Mind always gives us optional experiences. It is something like this. What is on my palm? Remote control. Very good. Now I remove it. Now what is on my palm? There is no remote control. So this object is recognized by us in two options is and is not. So all our knowledge in this world is always in the language of options of presence or absence. The same thing is applied to every experience. See, waking experience is. What is a dream experience? Dream experience is absence of waking experience. Dream experience is. What is the deep sleep experience? Absence of the dream experience. But in the absence of the waking and the dream experiences, in the deep sleep, is there is an experience of absence? No. Aham kimapi na janami. There is someone who was eliminating the presence experience of the waking and the dream as well as eliminating the experience of their absence in the deep sleep. Bhagavad Gita, 15th chapter. Bhagavan says, Sarvasya chaham rudisan nivishtaha mattaha smriti jnanam apohanancha vedaisya sarvai ahameva vidyaha vedanta krut veda videva chaham Sarvasya chaham rudisan nivishtaha I am the heart of everything and being. And because of my presence, the jnanam waking experiences are possible. Because of my presence, the dream experiences are possible. Because of me alone, the absence of the waking and the dream called as the deep sleep experience is possible. And because of me, the beginning and the end of the Samadhi experience is possible. So this me is an eternal presence. <laughs> Abiding in this eternal presence is the meaning of listening to the silence according to Bhagwan Raman Maharshi Maharaj. And the more you try to concentrate on silence, the more you will start listening to the sounds. See? Because you are struggling. See, friends. Therefore, listening to silence is a technique by which we go beyond all the complementary <coughs> pairs of experiences. What are the complementary pairs of experiences? Most of the people you must have heard also or said also, pairs of opposite. Dvandva means pairs of opposite. I don't subscribe to that translation. It's not opposite. Health is not opposite to the disease. Birth is not opposite to death. 
they are complementary to each other. If there is no disease, poor doctors, where will they go? If there is no death, birth has no meaning. If there is no poverty, riches have no meaning. If there is no misery, joy has no meaning. If there is no failure, success has no meaning. See friends, if there is no wife, husband has no meaning. So should we say husband and wife are opposed to each other? They may be, but they are complementary. <laughs> See friends. And once we recognize this basic principle of life, that life is a cloth, like Kabirji's bhajan, he said, life is like a cloth which is woven by the threads which are growing crisscross. There cannot be a cloth made out of the threads going in one direction alone. But I want a cloth which is going only one direction thread type. Then it is called as a rope. Hang yourself. <laughs> this is what life is. And if we accept this principle of life, this is what Bhagwan's words are. Eka chintana, chintanam, reflection. Not struggling. Pranabandhana dliyate manaha. As long as your pranayam is operating, the curfew of pranayam is operating, mind will remain quiet. The moment the curfew is lifted, it will bounce out. See? And therefore you will see these yogis, etc., they are very angry people. Little bit something happens here, they burst out. Why they burst out? With great difficulty, I was keeping quiet and somebody disturbed. See, friends. Therefore, it is okay initially, it is enough. But that cannot become the ultimate in life. See? How long will you sit in meditation? Meditation cannot be the goal of life. Like health cannot be the goal of life. I don't know how people are so much attracted towards this health philosophy. All the time, health, 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 health. See? Health is a problem. Have you seen any uh, terrorist who is not healthy? Simply, health cannot be enough. It has to be supported by wisdom. And what kind of wisdom? Not the kind of wisdom we have. Our wisdom is available for others. <laughs> wisdom available for others is called as philosophy. See? Like every married person tells the other unmarried boy, come on man, don't get married, there is nothing in that. He will suffer afterwards. He understands this after his marriage. This is called as delayed wisdom. <laughs> Not that kind of wisdom. We want steady wisdom in life. And this is the word used in Bhagavad Gita. Stita pranyasya ka vasha samadhistasya keshava stitadhi kim pravasheta kimasita vrajeta kim. Are you going to sit all the time in meditation and suffer silently? See? You will see most of the meditation classes, they have got this gimmick. They will be, so first of all, Lot of time is spent only in asan. The like the terrorist goes with the AK-47. These yoga students they go with the mattress, you know, like <laughs> yoga. <laughs> yoga. And then they will be sitting there. And then pillows. This pillow here, this pillow below. And some people pillow and then sit. <laughs> you think I have love always, it is not. I was in Germany and we had a, you know, a retreat for one day and first morning session was over, something like you know, uh, 8 to 9, one hour I spoke to them and thereafter break for half an hour. So 
So I wonder what will you do? I said you do what you like. I'll go for a walk. I'll come back. So I went for a walk and came back. And then again second session for meditation. And by the time I came in half an hour, bottles were emptied and drums were filled. <laughs> And they all became already liquid spiritualists. <laughs> See? Like, you know, the passive smoking, it was passive drinking for me. <laughs> you know what is passive smoking? When somebody smokes and the smoke comes to you free, what is passive smoke? In the same manner, the moment I entered that hall, there was a spiritual atmosphere. <laughs> And then they started. Ha. Everybody was in the Shambhavi Mudra. <laughs> <laughs> and what is that? that meditation. <laughs> so they say, now sit down for meditation. Sit down. Sit properly. Sit properly. Close the windows, doors. Close. Switch off the lights. Switch off the lights. And now sit quiet. One person asked me this question. Swamiji, I went for the meditation camp of so and so. They asked us to switch off the light. What is the reason? I said, you ask them, how do I know? I never switch off light. But why they do? I said, look here. Is meditation a bad thing to be done in darkness? Theft is committed in darkness. Is it Are you stealing something? Why darkness? See? And second thing, but yet why they tell? Because both the student and the teacher can go to sleep. <laughs> and when meditation is over, everybody is awakened from the sleep. How it was fresh. This cannot be the goal of life. See? Eka chintana. This is the most important thing. So when we are focusing our attention, we are going away. <coughs> Don't concentrate in life. Concentration is always on others. See? And when you concentrate, what happens? And when you stop concentrating, what happens? Do the experiment right away. Okay? Be very, very alert and participate fully. Don't do half-heartedly. Everything should be done wholeheartedly. This is one technique of listening to the silence. Many of us have got this bad habit. Whatever we do, we don't do wholeheartedly. We do with the whole in the heart. Achabandhya. <laughs> so, now, focus your attention on Bhagavan Ramadavarshi's picture. Understand your experience. Your experience is you are away from yourself. Now, withdraw from there. Now, focus your attention on the camera. Now, recognize your experience. You have come closer to yourself. Now, I will chant some words. Listen to those words. Sri Ram. Sri Ram. When you heard those words, you were sitting in your ears. Sri Ram. Sri Ram. Your hearing ability is nothing but 
mind expressing through the ears shri ram shri ram now here after again i'll chant shri ram but now focus attention on the silence between the two words shri ram shri ram shri ram now you are out of your ears but still landed in your mind now one more step don't bother whether it is a sound or a silence shri ram shri ram shri ram when presence and absence of sound is equal we have gone beyond the mind भगवान रमणा से एक चिंतना नाशमेत्यदाइंड इज डिस्ट्रॉइड बी वेरी अटेंडिंग डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ द माइंड हैज टू बी क्लियरली अंडरस्टूड माइंड हैज टू फंक्शन one is perception and other is projection when only the perceptional aspect of the mind is functional and the projectional aspect of the mind is suspended that mind is called as a dead mind and that mind is common for all of us i look at a girl that is perception no problem but after looking at the girl perception then the mind starts the second functional aspect of the mind projection she is beautiful she is awful without her life is useless somehow i must go and go near to her and talk to her there was a husband and a wife they boarded a bus and there was beautiful girl and just behind her was her husband and the husband's wife was behind him so the wife was watching the husband is standing too near to that beautiful girl i know these men are terrible so the husband looked at uh, her he said no don't worry there nothing 
and after few seconds that girl who was in front of him she looked behind and gave one heart to this husband so husband got perspiration and told his wife darling i swear there is nothing i didn't do anything she said i only pinched her <laughs> projection start see friends all that is required to attain to this absolute silence which is uncorrupted by the sounds and which cannot be enhanced by the silence is the real silence what bhagwan ramana was talking about see friends एक चिंतनाथ ना the phrase abiding in this infinite one is listening to the silence now the mind is no more reacting the projectional aspect the reactionary habit of the mind is completely destroyed if you watch within yourself we all have default settings in our life okay all have the same default settings some people have got a habit of saying no anything you say so uh, shall we go for a temple no let us go to the temple what do you say no no i didn't say <laughs> that no is by default they don't know also that they are saying no in the same manner most of us have developed a character by which we are only mechanically living in this life and therefore there is no charm living in silence is not leading a mechanical default set life it is a spontaneous life spontaneity is the insignia of abidance in the absolute reality my friends how much spontaneous as we open our eyes how much time it takes to see the things in front of our eyes 0 seconds spontaneous but if there is some problem in the eyes and then then we are not normal now why all these things happen in our life why we are not able to listen to this absolute silence is because of free downloads incoming calls free this happened in gujarat there was one uh, person standing outside his own house on the road and from the house things were coming at him lota so he will catch it and again after some belna he will catch it then katori again so the passer by said why don't you give her back He said, "No incoming free." <laughs> Similarly, we have the same habit of living in life. Because something is free, take it. Is it necessary? See, the other day I was in somebody else's place, and uh, that uh, man told me, "Sami ji." i wanted to call you but i don't know what happened to my phone it doesn't work you know it has become hang up 
So the wife said, give it to Swamiji, he knows everything, you know nothing. Swamiji is a gazetted Swami. Okay, my gazetted officer, you must have heard, gazetted Swami. I said, okay, let me see, I saw that. Now what could be done? I said, I'll tell you, you do that. Switch on, switch on. Go to the settings, go to the settings. Scroll down, scroll down. You will get an option. Uh, restore factory settings. Got it? Yes. Now, there are two options. Yes and no. When you press yes, you will get another pop-up. Press yes. Do you want to reset the factory settings? Yes. All your data will be erased. Say yes. Yes. Now switch off and again start. Phone is normal. But why it happened? Because we went on downloading the free downloads beyond the capacity and as a result, our machine got hung up. Same thing happens in our life. How much free download we are putting in our system? Ganga gay Ganga das, Jamna gay Jamna das, Garme hai Dev das. Three friends. And this is only because we have never taken care of our mind. Three friends. Constantly reacting, constantly reacting. These reactions create lacerations on our mind. A lacerated, bleeding mind can never be happy. And therefore, if we have to listen to the silence, we must clearly know, listening to the silence means going beyond the relativity. Relativity is valid only as long as the mind is functional. See? And then you will start analyzing your own experiences. And you will discover, nobody else is required. Don't go from post to pillar. No, find out yourself. See, there are many instances in the lives of many Mahatmas who went to Bhagavan Ramadvarshi. There used to be one boy from Denmark. He is ultimately was called a Shunyata. He was in a royal garden in London. That time, Rabindranath Tagore was traveling, uh, walking in that garden <coughs> because he, that time he got the Nobel Prize, so appreciated by the royal guest, and he was walking. And he saw this young boy, 12 years or 13 years of age, he was doing some kind of gardening. So Rabindranath Tagore called him and told you, come with me to India. Those days there was no problem of visa and uh, terrorism and all that. So he came to India. And after he came, he stayed few days in Shanti Niketan. And then he said, no, I don't want to stay here. Where should I go? So he was asked, you go to Ramanashtra. He came to Bhagavan Ramana Maharshi. And when he came to Bhagavan Ramana Maharshi, for three days he was simply sitting in silence in that place, in the presence or absence of Bhagavan Ramana Nothing to ask. Three days. Then Bhagavan Ramana said, Yes, Shunyata. And that was enough. After three days of silence, one word, Shunyata. And he took that as his name. And he went to Pithoragad. He lived there for 60 years. Not talking to anybody or cheerful. And then the Americans came. They found out a white person. And they said, no, no, you must come to America so that we can destroy you. He said, I have nothing to tell you. I have nothing to ask from you. Let me be here. No, 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 you must come and teach us. He said, I don't have anything to teach. Yet he was taken. In California it happened. And one day when he was going for a walk, one car came from backside, dashed him, and he fell, got fractured, finally died. 
remaining in silence, he is living at no reaction level. Never react. Like what? This, you try next time you do this. Stand before an aquarium and look at the water, not the fish. Look at the water and try to experience what must be the experience of the water. When the fish move, Will the water get tickling? Hey, come on, yeah, don't move fast. <laughs> when we add a few more fish, will it be a load for the water? When we remove all the fish, will it be a loss to the water? That is our experience. त्रिशुधामसुयन भोग्यम भोक्ता भोगश्चे भवेत ते भ्योविलक्षण साक्षी चिन मात्रो हम सदाशिवा मई ये वसकलम जातम मई सर्वम प्रदिष्टितम मई सर्वम लयम यादि तद् ब्रह्मात्वयमस्मे हम abiding in this is listening to the silence which does not involve the operation of either the sense organs or the mind or the intellect or the understanding or the misunderstanding or not understanding. None of them hold good. See friends. Therefore, all the time, if our process of learning from every experience continues, we will reach this silence which is heard without any medium of knowledge. In some of the texts, it is called as Mahashunya. In Yoga Shastra, it is called as Mahashunya. Mahashunya means other than this, there is nothing. See? Purushana param kinchit sa kashtha sa paragati. Beyond this absolute purusha, purunatvat purusha. Beyond this infinite reality, there is nothing else. So, if you take our whole, uh, our total life, what is our total life? I, the conscious space in which the Clouds of the waking experiences with the waker, waking world and waking experience, the trio, they come, they rain heavily and disappear. Where from the clouds come, where they go, we don't know. Then the second type of clouds come, they come white clouds, only making noise, no rain. They also come and disappear. That is the dream experience. Then there is a pitch darkness. Then it is the deep sleep experience. Once in a while, there are no clouds in the sky. It is a blue sky. That is the Samadhi experience. All these four kinds of experiences are constantly coming and going, coming and going. But we have never come and never gone from anywhere and to anywhere. But our problem is we want to do something. Our problem is Swamiji, I want to do meditation. Can you teach me? But I am in a hurry. Tell me quickly. See? Similar question was asked to uh, Vivekananda Swami when he was in the US. One doctor, he was very much impressed by his talk. And he said, Hey Swami, I am Dr. So and so. 
and I earn $10,000 an hour introduction, only in terms of dollars. And then he said, I like your knowledge, can you teach me? So, he said, uh, you are earning $10,000 per hour. If I teach you, you have to give me something. He said, of course, I'll give you fees. He said, no, let us have barter system. I teach you my knowledge, you teach me your knowledge. So that I can also earn $10,000 an hour. So the doctor said, come on, man. First 27 years I spent in getting the degree. Then next 27 years I killed 27,000 people. Now I get that much amount. And you want it in such a short time? He said, look here. In your our discussion, out of 60 minutes, 5 minutes are already gone. Only 55 minutes are remaining. So take 50 time, 27 and a half minutes for you and for me. You teach me your knowledge in 27 and a half minutes, I will teach you my knowledge in 27 and a half minutes. Friends, there is no hurry in this path. Because you don't have to reach anywhere. It is a journey from nowhere to nowhere by nobody. Till such time there is somebody he will struggle to achieve something, God realization. And then the question is come, how many can you tell me how much I am realized? Good neta. Why good neta? Because the brain is here only in Patela. There was one uh, teacher teaching yoga in Bits Pilani. I go there to bluff. So he came and uh, he said, Swamiji, how come you are here? I said, I come here to teach. Oh, I am so and so. I am a you know, yoga teacher in this university. And I have got uh, you know, all the facilities here. But the worst part is nobody comes here. The beautiful gym, all facilities available. But no student wants to learn this thing. What should I do? I said, do you get your salary? Enjoy. <laughs> My suffer. No, no, but you know my knowledge, I said, look here. If you want to teach yoga and gymnastics, go to Patiala. You know what is the Patiala? Patiala is a place where the brain has descended to Patela. This is called Patela. Patiala. You go there. And there nobody will talk about knowledge and wisdom. Only Uthava Nichira Kuruta. <laughs> As in here in this institution, every student is a genius from day one. They are planning their professional excellence. Before they complete, even second, third year, they are already placed. To such quality students, you want to teach them do Uparniche. Nobody will do that. Therefore, on this path, you will never get crowds. Upanishad says, Kshurasya dhara nishita duruttaya durgam patastat kavayo vadanti. It is the path by the one, to the one, all by yourself, without feeling lonely. There is no company required on the way. Therefore, no Vedantic teacher worth his name will hold on the crowds around him. See? No crowds. I remember once I was in Bombay and there was a common platform, five ten Mahatmas were called and some kind of function. So I was also called, I also go, very good time pass. So when I went, I went all by myself. So I told my friend, you drop me and you go, you don't have to come, there is no need also. Okay, he dropped me and I straight away walked in. So when I walked in, uh, then I went to the side where I had to sit, I sat on the floor. No, 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 you go on stage. I went and wanted to sit on the stage. Samaji, don't sit there. Then where should I sit? 
Where is your seva? I said, what do you think of yourself? You are my boss or what? No, 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 Swamiji, I am your seva. Do whatever you like. <laughs> <laughs> no, normally when the Mahatma has come, they put some asana. I said, then he put the asana. Now he was in a problem, we have to find out. Where is the asana? I said, your problem. Seva's problem. <laughs> After everything was over, he tells me, Swamiji, you know, in the Sadhu Samaj, it doesn't look good that you come alone. There should be some sevak with you. He prays, no. Bhagavan, Ravad Maharshi, never encourage. He was all by himself. If we cannot live all by ourselves in this world, such people get fear when they sit for meditation. All kinds of funny imaginations come. One person asks also this question, Kamaji, whenever I sit for meditation, I get a fear inside. They don't do meditation. So simple. No, my fear is, you know what? Suppose I start levitating. What will happen? It depends where you are sitting. <laughs> Suppose you are sitting right below the fan and starts going up. The fan blade becomes <laughs> realization. And if you are sitting directly below the sky, yet Gatwana Nivaratan. These are all the projections of the mind. Don't get carried away by that. It's all in the mind. See, friends. Thus, when we start playing with the mind and playing meditation, meditation, don't do meditation play meditation. And when you play something, I is not created. See? Like, you know, you are a common example. When you do meditation or when you do pranayam, it is something like this, you know. The different kind of teachers give different kind of punishments. Suppose it is a military uh, commander and one of the soldiers has done something wrong. So he has to be punished. What will be the punishment? Put the hammer sack, lift the gun and go around the parade ground 21 times and there are <laughs> punishment. If he is a teacher and you have done some wrong spelling, punishment. Write the same word for 100 times. If the teacher is a yoga teacher and if the student has done a wrong something, punishment. Do 21,000 pranayam. 21,000, sir, it will be too much. Okay. Do 2100 times. No, it will be too much. Do 21 times. Okay. And then he starts puffing there. Then you tell him, okay, stop. Why you didn't want to do for so long? No, I get tired. When you do pranayam for 10, 100 times, you get tired. Are you not breathing all your life? Are you tired? What is the difference between pranayam and breathing? Pranayam, I is born. And therefore we get tired. In breathing, nobody does breathing. <coughs> breathing happens. Exactly the same way. Let meditation happen. You will not be tired. Therefore, meditation is not a military drill to begin. And what I am telling you is not joke. It's a truth. Once I went to some other country and there was international yoga conference I was called. And uh, there is one very old place of Fatima in Portugal. And there we were taken to show and all that. We have seen all that. And then that person, uh, he took us to one place. And he had, you know, like our bell before the God, he had that bell in his pocket. When we reached there, he said, everybody said. So all his disciples sat down. And I went somewhere else and sat on a nice stone comfortably. They all sat there only. And he said, According to your position, yama, niyama, asan, pranayam, pratyar, dharana, dhyan, samadhi, 
when I start the bell, you start meditation. And when again I ring it, you meditation off. So, dun 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 meditation. And everybody is waiting. Dusri ghanti ke basti. And a cartoon of meditation. This is not meditation. Listening to silence means dukkheshu anudvigna manaha. When the miseries come, refuse to be miserable, then you are living in meditation. Dukkheshu anudvigna manaha, sukheshu vigatas pruhaha. When there are comforts, don't be attached to the comforts. Two things. One lady who did a lot of uh, home uh, leg work for my trip to uh, Kailash Manas. And uh, I said, Mama, you are not coming. Swamiji, so, I thought over it, but I am not coming now. I said, what is the problem? You will laugh. I said, anyway, I laugh. I do worry about my laugh. You know why I am not coming? There are no attached toilets on the way. I said, Mama, you people believe only in disposable tissue papers. We believe in disposable toilets. <laughs> we never go there again. So two things. If we are influenced by the miseries and if we are attached to the comforts, a person living in a comfort zone can never know the truth. Break that barrier. And then we can see what is happening inside. See? Our spirituality is five-star spirituality. AC, DC, UC, IC, 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 I bank. <laughs> Meditation. Hey friends, therefore listening to the silence means abiding in the absolute self, which doesn't depend on anything that independent substratum supporting all the experiences without becoming an experiencer is listening to the silence. Om Purna Madaha Purna Vidam Purna Atpurna Gudachate Purna Sya Purna Madaya Purna Meva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Yoga Maha Hari Om.